let C be a convex set in Rn. The integer hull of C, denoted C sub i, is the convex hull of all the integral points in C. Let's look at an example. Suppose that C is the set of x1, x2, satisfying the following inequality. If we sketch C, we'll get the unit disk. Now, the integral points in C are the following. 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, minus 1, 0, and 0, minus 1. So, in this case, C sub i is simply the following set. So, if we write it out, it will look like this. But to describe this, we don't really need 0, 0 to be in the set here. We're going to look at the following result. Suppose that we have a half space, h, given by this. So h is the set of x satisfying the inequality a transpose x at least beta. Here, a is an n double with integer entries, not identically 0, and beta can be any real number. Suppose that a1 up to an are relatively prime, that is, the greatest common divisor of these numbers is 1, then the integer hull of h is given by this. Before we look at a sketch of this proof, let's look at an example. Say h is given by the set of x1, x2 satisfying x1 plus x2 greater than equal to half. We can sketch this on the two-dimensional plane. And the inequality x1 plus x2 greater than equal to a half can be represented by this. Now let us mark the integer points satisfying this inequality. So what this theorem says is that the integer hull of h is going to be defined by this inequality here. So recall that the ceiling function of a real number denotes the least integer at least that number. So the least integer at least a half is 1. The statement of this theorem looks reasonable, but the proof is actually not that trivial. So let's begin by calling this set Q. So we want to show that h sub i is equal to q. One direction of inclusion is easy to see. So suppose that u is an integral point in h, then a transpose u must be an integer. But since u is in h, a transpose u is at least beta. So a transpose u is an integer at least beta. That means a transpose u has to be at least the least integer at least beta. And this shows that the set of all integer points in H is a subset of Q, and since Q is convex, the convex hull of this set, which is H sub i, is a subset of Q. We now show the reverse inclusion, that is, we want to show that Q is a subset of H sub i. And it is sufficient to show the following. So what this is saying is that if we look at this example here, in order to show that q is a subset of h sub i, all we need to show is that the points on the boundary here, which is a hyperplane, is a subset of h sub i. And the reason is as follows. Suppose we pick an arbitrary element that satisfies this green inequality, and we want to show that this point is also in h sub i. What we do is, we pick an integer point that is deep enough, let's say y, so that a transpose y is bigger than a transpose x. And that's always possible, because a is not identically 0. Now, if we move from y towards x and beyond until we hit the boundary defined by the inequality, let's call this point u, what we have done is, we have found u that is on the hyperplane, and there's a point in h sub i, and y clearly is a point h sub i. So all the points in the line segment between u and y will be in h sub i as well, because h sub i is a convex set. And that means that x is in h sub i as well. So we are now going to focus on proving that this hyperplane is a subset of h sub i. And we'll give a sketch of the ideas involved. So first of all, we're going to find integer point satisfying this equation. And this is a single linear Diophantine equation because the coefficients of x are relatively prime and the ceiling of beta is an integer, we know that there has to be an integer solution to this. Next, 
we're going to take a basis d1 up to dm minus 1 of the null space of A transpose. Because the entries of A transpose are integers, we may assume that d1 up to dn minus 1 are rational. But since we are looking at the null space, we may clear all the fractions and assume that d1 up to dn minus 1 are integers. Now notice that this hyperplane here is given by this set of points. And this set here is a subset of all the integer points satisfying this equation. So in order to complete the proof, it is sufficient to show that the convex hull of this is exactly this. The details for doing that are rather technical, and they are left as an exercise.